So the Holy Spirit is reaping those out of the desert, bringing them in a promised land. It will be a miraculous harvest. It will not be by the hand of man, but it will be by the hand of the Spirit. Can we say by the hand of the Spirit? Night. Amos 8, 11 to 13. Now let's open this scripture. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord. There are people who honestly searching for the word of the Lord. Well, we have the word of the Lord, we can say. But it's not to find in the letter. It's found in the spirit. Can we say in the spirit? spirit. They shall run to and fro seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. In the day that the fair virgins and strong young men shall faint from thirst. Because in a lot of churches, people coming together and they love the word of God. They love the teachings. They love the scriptures. But the essence of the one who inspired the scriptures himself, the spirit of the living God, they're longing for that term. Can we say it's not the letter? But it's the spirit of God who brought it. And believers look, they look for oil. They look for the anointing. They look for the flow. They look for a touch of God within their mind, within their spirit, within their body. They look for a touch of God. They look for a move of God in their life. Amen. So the believers, they're looking for the oil, the anointing. You can carry the name Christian. And Christian means the anointed ones. So if you carry the name Christian, are you really anointed one? Are you an anointed one? Well, I'm a follower of Christ. Well, Christ was the anointed one. So is Christian a label or is it representing your life in Christ with the anointing of the Holy Spirit flowing in your life? Those who follow the anointed one. Those who follow the anointing. The streams of the oil. The oil. Can we say the oil? I have a big question here. I put it in red. The big question today for you is, are you anointed? I can, you know, if I ask, are you a Christian? Everybody will wave. Even the people on the street, they will never go to church. They will wave at me. I'm a Christian. Right? Because Christian is so commonly used that the essence of the word is gone. We need to know Christ Jesus Christ, Jesus the anointed one by God himself. If we hear and we talk about are you a Christian, actually we ask, are you an anointed one? Are you anointed by the Spirit of God? That needs to echo in our minds, that needs to echo in our hearts when somebody says it and even when you say it yourself and even when you write it down. Can we say I am an anointed one? In this vision, I saw wanderers looking for oil. They feel dry like walking in a desert. They go into churches and places where they've ever been because, you know, I grew up there. My mom and dad went there. That's good. Amen. But there is more. Can we say there's more? There is more from the Spirit of God. This spiritual dryness makes the soul ache it makes the spirit ache it makes your body ache this spiritual dryness can afflict and make inflictions into your body and your soul and in your mind people leave the church because they're not satisfied they cannot feel the anointing they cannot feel the spirit of god moving in the world listen to this one people are wanderers you know what they are looking for alternatives they're looking for spiritual contact they're looking for yoga they're looking for Buddhism. They're looking for spiritualism. They're looking for new age. There's a longing in the spiritual realm, not only in the churches, but also outside of the church. So what is the difference between the church and the world? Talk to me. Am I talking to someone here? The anointing. Can we say the anointing? Now, I made a decision. I don't know what, what about you. I don't want to be like that. 
Spirit of God is, is speaking to us. Who has an ear will listen to what the Spirit has to say to the churches. Amen. Let's open Romans 8 verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Are you a son of God? Are you a woman of God? They are waiting for you. Can we say that together? They are waiting for me. Look at your neighbor and say they are waiting for you. They are waiting for you. Now I looked up revealing. It is exposing. It is manifesting. You need to be revealed. You need to be manifested in the power and the strength of God. So that people can see you. Now the one thing we need and can connect with it. What we need to have to be revealed is the power of the supernatural. Can we say the supernatural? The supernatural is the key. That key unlocks the anointing of the spirit if we are open for it. Then the oil can flow in my life, in your life. And you will prophesy while you're doing your job. The power of God will flow through your life. Say, I need to be manifested in the supernatural. So creation can find, can find me. Listen, there is something about combinations. You know, when you go to the store, you go to Subways, you can order a combo, right? Well, this is the combo of the Word of God. Listen to this one. The Word needs to have a believer. Software without a computer is nothing. Software and a computer. Music without able to play it is useless. Words without power is useless. Prayer without faith is nothing. Faith without work is nothing. The Bible says it's that. Word without the spirit, without the anointing, is nothing. The body without the soul is dead. So is all the other stuff. If there's not the combination, it is dead. Without oil, without the anointing, without the spirit of God, there is just a wilderness. The spirit of God was hovering over it. He can pull out of the chaos the things, what is needed. And separate and shift it from the things what is not needed. We don't. I'll give you a simple explanation. Prayer with faith. Prayer without faith. There's a scripture about this one, right? Now listen to this. James chapter 5 verse 15. Sometimes people get confused about the explanation of the scripture. Why? Because if you're not connected to the one who wrote it. You get the wrong impression, you get the wrong interpretation, you get the wrong translation. Amen? Now, look what it says, what it says here. And a prayer of faith shall save the sick. Can we say shall? shall? It shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, the focus word in this scripture is shall. In the New King James, it's will. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he committed sins, they will be forgiven. Now, when I say will or when I say shall, what does that mean? It means there is no room for another option. That means there is no other result possible. Because people were sick in the church and they were brought to the elders. And the elders prayed for the man of God. And nothing happened. I was like, can you follow me? Does it still happen? You pray for a person and the, and the prayer is somehow not functioning. But the word cannot lie. The word of God cannot lie. And, I was, and I'm reading the scripture again. It's like the prayer of faith will save the sick. The prayer, and the Lord will raise him up. He will do it. Say, he will do it. But now listen and look again in the first half of the scripture. And the prayer of faith. Now if there's prayer without faith, nothing, nothing shall happen. But if prayer is there with faith. Say, with faith. So I learned when I was, not, there's prayer and there's prayer of faith. And it's two different things. It's two completely different things. So you can pray 
and not having a result because I missed something, what I didn't do, what was in the Bible. Because you know what? I didn't believe in healing. So why should I pray as an elder for healing if I don't believe it in, in myself? It is useless because it, there was no combo. We need a combination because the combination gives you the result. It is a promise. So even the Bible says, if you just do it, the prayer of faith will save the sick. It will, you know, save. Save means be completely healed. That's what save means in this scripture. It is not saving the soul. It means in this scripture, you are healed completely. There's no other result possible. You know, the only result is possible if you disconnect prayer from your faith. If you don't believe it and you pray, you have other result because it didn't line up with the word. It needs to line up with the word. If you have faith for something and you don't have, you have, don't have prayer, where's the result? If you have faith for something and you don't have works, where's the result? You need to have the combo. If you have the right combo, the word of God in the good ground, say that's the right combo. You have the word, the seed in the right ground. That will grow. Then the harvest will come. But listen, Mark 4.20. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word and accept it. So you see there's again a combo. You hear it, but then you need to accept it. Because if you hear and not accept it, it's gone. It's not reproducing. Exactly. And accept it. Can we say, I accept it? Then it will bear fruit. That's the thing. It's the right combo. There needs to be oil in the lamp to have a fire. Here's the one, not the letter, but the Spirit gives life. 2 Corinthians 3 for 6. Just write it down. The letter, not of the letter. Don't let, ha don't let us have a covenant of the letter, but of the Spirit. But of the oil of God, the anointing, because the anointing reveals. It changes my heart. It changes my mind. It changes my life. It changes my situations. The Bible says, even not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills. But the Spirit gives life. So if I just use the Word of God and take it by the letter, and take it by the grammar, it's getting boring. The Bible speaks about ten virgins. I'm always wondering about the ten virgins. Ten virgins. Can I say virgin? What is a virgin? She is clean and pure. Now, in that same example, we are clean and pure by the blood of Christ. Amen? Now, this is an interesting story about the lamps. And I was reading it again, and God showed me some things in it. Matthew 25, 4, 3 and 4. And it says, Those who are foolish took the lamps and took no oil with them. Say oil. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Say oil. You have two groups of Christians. One who have oil. One who don't have oil. One who walk in the oil. And one dry up in the desert. God is going to shift those people. He's going to move with the spirit. Listen. The foolish one had a lamp. They had the light. You see, I'm Christian. I have the light of the world. I have the light. The Bible says, I am the light. But they, don't have, they didn't have oil, the Bible says. Yep. They had the lamp, but no oil. Now the wise, it's interesting. They had a lamp, and the Bible says they had oil in a vessel. So you need to have a container to contain and keep the oil to capture it. Say, I capture the oil. You need to be able to contain the oil. Now, we all know that 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 says, Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? That's your vessel. Your body is your vessel. Oh, wow. 
So there's vessels without oil. There's vessels without oil. The wise and the foolish ones. Five of them are wise and five are foolish. You know, you know what exactly the word foolish means? In the Greek it says moros. It's interesting and I looked at it and it means dull, stupid, boring or to shut up. To close your mouth. Don't speak about it. And the root from the word moros is <laughs> mysterion. Mysterious. It is mysterious. So if you keep something what is good and you just keep it for yourself and you make it a mystery for other people, you don't speak about the mystery. Well, it will be a mystery for other, others, right? And that's what it's not to adapt and connect to God. They were not speaking about the word of God. They were not applying the word of God. There was not say, nothing that was testifying about their lives, about the power and the miracles of God. Oh, <laughs> the man of God already said, he likes to hear you speak, right? And me too. And now the Bible says, if you are foolish if you don't speak. Wow. Now listen to this. A believer cannot be quiet. Say, I cannot be quiet. Don't be quiet about what God does in your life. And it's connected to the next scripture. Hey, Revelations 12 verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Only by the blood of the lamb? And the word of the testimony. You cannot be quiet if you are saved by the blood of the lamb. Give your testimony because the testimony is your confirmation. Is the confirmation. You cannot be foolish if you hush up. The Bible says you are foolish. That's why you need to speak. You speak over your problems. Speak to the mountain that can be moved. But if you don't speak, it cannot be moved. And if you not pray with faith, God cannot do anything. It needs to be the combo. Say the combo. The blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. That's the biggest supersized combo of the Holy Spirit. And a power saving action of Jesus Christ. A lamp, the flame can only be fed by the oil. Some people will say, well, I miss the fire of God. The lamp can only ignite the fire with the oil in it. That's why a lot of people sing this little light of mine. Because that's what, that's what those Five virgins had, they had the lamp and it was a little light. And I think, I don't know who was singing it, but that's like for me the five foolish virgins. Uh, virgins. It's a little light because they didn't have enough oil. If you have enough oil, it's not a little light. It's a blazing fire. Because if you have oil and you drop, if you have oil and there's a little fire and you pour the oil in the fire, it's a blazing fire. Amen. It's, and it will speak even. It says, whoosh. Spiritual dryness. Look for the anointing. Fill your vessel today. Fill your vessel today. Listen, you and we and I need the oil. The oil needs to flow. Well, listen. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal by, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds. Pulling down a stronghold is not pulling down the devil because the devil was already defeated. Pulling down stronghold is your thought. What is impossible impregnated or influenced or it's like a virus having in there what needs to be erased that is a stronghold and that's why you're fighting 
at. It's not about the devil. It's just about your thoughts. What still can be influenced by him, but it's not a deal. Now listen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Can, you see? It's strongholds. Pulling down arguments. An argument is not the devil. The argument is my mind. It's an argument what I have with people. I can argue with Brian. Brian, what kind of shoes do you have? It's black. It's brown? No, it's black. I can have an argument over, about it, right? Casting down arguments. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you can have a high thing in understanding the scripture wrong and say, well, if I pray, nothing happened. That can be, an, that can be an also an argument. What did God mean? But if you missed the point and you didn't see that the prayer needs to be there with faith, it's disconnected. You don't want to be disconnected. Bringing, and now listen to this. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Our thoughts, our experience, our science, our religion can be an argument against, against God. But what do we need to do with that? Capture it. You need to capture. You have the ability to capture it. And then the Bible says, bring it under the obedience of Christ. Say, I bring it under the obedience of Christ. Now, I will say this again. I will bring it under the obedience of anointing. I will bring it under the obedience of the anointed one. Submit my thoughts. I capture them to myself and I bring them under the obedience of of the anointed one under the obedience of the anointing. So even though my, my mind says, well, the doctor said this, and my parents told me this, and experience has brought me in this situation, and religion has always told me, no, you cannot do that. It's a thought. It's an argument. Take it, capture, and bring it under the obedience of Christ. Bring it under anointing. Because anointing breaks the yoke. Can we say anointing breaks the yoke? Isaiah 10 verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder. And his, jo and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because, because of the anointing oil. Because of the anointing oil. Your spiritual dryness. Your problems in your life. Your thoughts. Your experiences in your life. Bring them under anointing. Anointing is the answer. Anointing is the answer. Say God. Please give me only the anointing. The anointing is the answer. The anointing is the answer for all things. Spiritual dryness, looking for anointing. Fill your vessel today. Fill it. Fill it.